gentlemen, welcome to the Guildhall Preston for Championship Boxing. The main event of the evening, sponsored by Sicily Limited, 12 rounds of boxing of three minutes each round at nine stone four pound for the Super Featherweight Championship of Great Britain. Between and in addition to you from Croydon, Pat Doherty. And in this corner from Bradford, John Doherty. At the weighing, Pat Doherty scaled nine stone three and a half pack. John Doherty scaled nine stone three pack. Your referee for this contest. Fight night brings you the, the first British title fight of 1986. And one thing is for sure, the new champion will be called Doherty. But will it be Pat or will it be John? He'll also be Britain's first ever super featherweight champion because this is a new division with a weight limit of nine stone and four pounds. As you heard, it was over 12 rounds to be decided over that distance. Let's see what happens now as we join our commentators, Jim Watt, with Jim Rosenthal. Thanks very much indeed, Gary, and good evening to you all. Well, this one must be the definitive commentator's nightmare. We're going to call them by their Christian names, but names yourself and Jim Watt. Round one. John Doherty in the blue trunks. Pat Doherty in the white and green. Pat from Croydon in London. John, the blue from Bradford, and that might will be the best way to remember him. Blue from Bradford is John Doherty. 12 rounds. First British title fight to be staged in Preston. And Jim Watt, we picked a nice one here, haven't we? But uh, sort out the Doherty's for us. Just give us your impressions how you feel things might go. Yeah, yeah, well, it's too bad about the names have been similar, but uh, I think that's where the similarities end. With all the ingredients for a cracker, we have an aggressive uh, puncher in Pat and a classy counter-punching boxer in John. So I'm expecting a cracker here. The, the only worry I have is the fact that John has taken the fight at short notice. And it is a 12 rounder after all. Pat Doherty has known uh, for months about the fight. John has come in at short notice, so it depends. Uh, the condition he has for a club runner. That's absolutely right. We're just talking to John Doherty. He says uh, he's been in good condition. He's been only had Christmas Day off, and for once in his life, has had a good time to prepare for this contest, despite taking it at what less than a week's notice. See, there is a, you know, a big difference between training under normal circumstances to keep yourself in good shape and training for a 12-round title fight. There is a big difference. And uh, John must have the doubts in his mind, is he fit enough for the 12 rounds? And that may affect his performance in the early rounds when maybe he should be building up the points. A couple of minutes gone, opening round. John Doherty in the blue. On the retreat pattern as we might have expected Pat Doherty comes here with a refutation of being certainly the more aggressive fighter and I think we can expect him to force the pace and do most of the chasing as he tries to land this British title He says a lot of his relations have come from the Mansfield area. There's no question that uh, the moustached John Doherty has the, the, better, the better support here at Preston's Guild Hall. But a very promising opening round. Round, then. 
Patrick Doherty. From Croydon, very much a Londoner when you when you talk to him. Irish parents from Kilkenny, but uh, saying to me he's only spent three days in Ireland in all his life. So very much a Londoner from South Londoner from Croydon. 14 wins in his 22 fights. A moderate amateur career. In fact, his family never wanted him to turn professional. Had early problems. At one stage, lost his license, but. Uh, got that back and now Pat Doherty who should have been facing Najid Daho here tonight finds himself up against his namesake John in the blue instead second round then Dell very much on the scene, Jim, albeit in the background at the moment. And John Doherty might have similarities to Cowdell about him in the way he stays on the edge of things and avoids getting into trouble. Yeah, yeah, well, I would say that's pretty much so, but uh, we don't have two Pat Cowdells there. Uh, Pat is uh, unique. The way he can stand right in front of a man, yeah, he doesn't get hit. And we'll forget about that, the last fight with Nelson. He's a little bit special, but normally... Pat is almost impossible to land cleanly on. Uh, already, uh, Pat Doherty here is getting through to John. I expected it to take a couple of rounds before Doherty get close enough to land some decent punches. But even in the first round, uh, Pat was getting up nice and close. And uh, John didn't seem to have the power to keep him off. I don't know if that's going to be significant as the fight was on. Minute gone, second round, and what a good minute too for Pat Doherty. From Croydon, and these are good punches coming in, and John Doherty is in trouble in the second round. And the crowd, who are predominantly behind him, go just a little bit quiet. Pat Doherty plays war games in his spare time, that's his hobby. Dresses up in all the uniform and gets out with certain other fans of that particular activity they fire blanks at each other and things like that and look to take the enemy's flag would you believe well I think he's reaching out now to try and grasp John Doherty's flag very early in this British title fight there are a couple of minutes gone in this second round and early in this fight we lean perhaps Jim Watt slightly towards Pat for his aggression yeah certainly and he's getting his punches off a little bit quicker once they get up close uh, John's doing well with the jab but when he manages to keep it at long range but he doesn't seem to have the power to hold Pat off and I think uh, 12 rounds is a long time when you don't have the power to discourage an opponent that's absolutely right Pat Doherty coming on pretty strong in the second round but he's gonna do well to to get to John I think he's got the reputation for being a durable sort of fellow but this British title fight is building up very well the battle of the Doherty's here at Preston and be sure to rejoin us for more action straight after this break Doherty with his corner men in there been with Fred Ricks since he was an amateur that's Fred Ricks with a moustache just bending over him there and must be well pleased with the way he started that's John Doherty in the blue and the moustache in fact uh, 20 wins, 3 defeats and 3 draws for John Doherty and he hasn't been beaten for a couple of years Second down Round 3 It's round 3 Man in the middle is John Coyle his 10th British title fight John Coyle, one of our best referees from the Wolverhampton area Pat 
Doherty. If you're not hearing double, believe you me, it's Pat Doherty in the white trunks against John Doherty in the blue. continues to make the fight Jim and you must be wondering really how long John can ship that sort of punishment bear in mind we've only had uh, three of the 12 yeah well, well John's looking all right there, there are no signs of uh, dismay or uh, lack of condition in his work at the moment he just doesn't have the power to keep Pat off and that's the problem I mean, he seems to be in good enough shape he's throwing good punches He's giving as good as he gets on occasions uh, as far as volume of punches go, but he just doesn't have that little bit of power uh, to make Pat think twice before he gets his own punches off. And that is going to be a problem as this fight goes on. Well, just to back up what we've been telling you, a bit of blood coming from John Doherty's nose now, and he's flicking away with it with that right glove. Face reddening up just a little bit, John Doherty. really is hunting him good over arm right above us he's famed for his defensive skills and his elusive skills no record at all John of stopping people and his gum shield nearly came out there and really he's gonna have to show all his defensive armory as it were here tonight Jim if he's gonna win this crown yeah, and the problem at the moment, uh, Pat is getting close to him whenever he wants close to him. He's not having any trouble. I think that's John's gum shield just been thrown out. I think that, that tells us he's in a lot of trouble with his nose. His nose has been bleeding, I think, since uh, the second round. He's probably had trouble breathing now, and he's thrown the gum shield out. That's not good news either. It's a tough round, this one, for John Doherty from Bradford. Gum shield out, bleeding from the nose and stopping a lot of punches from the aggressive South Londoner in the white trunks. That's Pat Doherty, and Pat Doherty's smaller band of supporters. The noise rumbles from them behind us as they sense their man could well be onto something here. Well, just looking at John Doherty, there's his career record with those 20 wins out of 26 fights. Nothing like a puncher, though. I think he's, uh, he's only stopped three opponents. But he says he's 100% fit. And goodness me, he's going to have to be. Um, against Pat Doherty in the other corner. In fact, John had a look at Pat Doherty in the... Yorkshire Television Studios on calendar last night but going across to Pat he said he'd never even seen John until the way in today had no idea what he looked like Second round number four fourth round then if you just come in you're watching a British title fight here from the Guildhall Preston for the nine stone four title new division the british super featherweight crown and at the moment it is going the way of pat doherty who is fighting john doherty and pat in the white has been much more aggressive and has given john so far three very uncomfortable rounds and again jim that nose is bleeding and must be giving him trouble. Yeah, John's having a lot of problems to, to put up with tonight. Uh, and the, the nosebleed he could certainly do without. And in the last round, he threw out his gum shield, which is usually a sign he's having trouble breathing. But uh, John's keeping all the rounds close. But uh, it just, as, as I say, he can't seem to, to get away from Pat for any length of time. Pat's keeping him under constant pressure. I think that must be the plan in Pat's corner. They know John's taking the fight at short notice. He can't be in first-class condition. He may be in good condition, but not top condition. 
So set a pace all the time, keep him under pressure, and that's exactly what Pat's been doing. And I think this pace has got to tell more so on John as the fight goes. Mind you, John Doherty came back well with a, a neat little combination. And perhaps his corner might be thinking, well, it's early days yet, it's scheduled for 12. And if our fella can just stay in there, who knows what might happen later on. But really, just going back to that injury again, Jim Watt, is that the sort of thing where John Coyle might take a look at and possibly uh, get the doctor in? No, I, I've never known that I think to be stopped because of a nosebleed. Uh, I can't remember that happening, unless it's cutting the bridge of the nose, for example, right. but not just a straightforward nosebleed. But uh, when you go into a fight, which you know you come into in short notice, the other fellas in top class shape, you have a couple of doubts to begin with, uh, and then uh, you end up with a nosebleed and uh, under constant pressure, well, uh, it joins together into a kind of sad picture. But uh, John certainly isn't thinking about giving up, he's firing back at it, just as I'm speaking here. Absolutely right, he's coming back really well. What a good contrast we have out there with with Pat in the white trunks the more aggressive but John despite being on the receiving end of things coming back really well in the last 30 seconds round four see Pat has a better defense than John too Pat's getting his hands up in front of us here he goes here the hands are up there's nothing really keen getting through and you'll have to look at John's face to, to see the marks of the punches he's had to take but this type of fight suits Pat a lot more than John. Well, there we are in the middle there, just uh, turning around. That is uh, Najib Daho, who should have been fighting here tonight. Should have been fighting Pat Doherty, pulled out with an unfortunate injury but only pulled out at the end of last week, but Daho lined up to meet the winner here. And of course, Pat Cowdell still very much around at the moment. And just moving across to Pat Doherty. Things looking pretty relaxed uh, in that corner. I was saying uh, Pat Cowdell still very much around. The Euro his European title, in fact, is still vacant, but surely Pat Doherty must know that if he's successful here tonight, at some stage, Cowdell will figure very promptly in his path. Round of five. Fifth round, then. It's a 12-rounder because it's a, a British title fight. First British title fight ever staged here in Preston where they're looking to get this sport going again. And a good house here at the Guild Hall. A really warming to tonight's title fight sponsored by Sicily Limited it's the Doherty's there are two of them in there Pat Doherty from Croydon white trunks John Doherty from Bradford in the blue and after Doherty dominated the opening rounds Pat Doherty that is John, despite despite a nasty nosebleed and despite being very much on the retreat has come back very well indeed I'll tell you what Jim, with these Doherty's out there I can see why Reg Guthridge went to Atlanta for Tubbs and Witherspoon, can't you? Yeah, he's hung it right on us this time, Jim, definitely has still, uh, I think I'd just be happy that looks like some blood coming from John's eye I don't know if it's blood from his nose or if it's an eye injury, but if it is a cut, then it's just more bad news for John. I can't, I can't actually see the injury clearly as yet. Yeah, I think our statistician alongside me, Bob Me, has confirmed that looks like a cut to his left eye. And, well, dear me, these are desperate times now then for John Doherty from Bradford. A steady stream of blood from his nose. Look, as Jim Wadders said, that won't stop things but now cut over the left eye and that could be a very big handicap for him to cover indeed or to carry I should say two minutes gone round five Pat Doherty scenting his first British title 
in the white. Blood on his trunks. That has come from John Doherty, and indeed it just flipped over us at ringside, Jim, as well. So that'll be a cleaning door. See, John's under constant pressure. He's throwing good punches. He's firing back uh, most of the time, but he's always under pressure, which is the big thing in this fight. Uh, fighting at a pace is okay if you're the one who's setting the pace, but uh, it's been Pat who's been setting the pace, and John been under the pressure all the time. Uh, and it, one, one thing's for sure, he is in good shape. He told us he was in good shape with a minute short notice, and, and he certainly proved that. He's in excellent condition. And a little flurry. And three or four good little punches showing that uh, John Doherty is far from finished here. Daho alongside us now. What are your views on how things are going so far? Well, I think is uh, the what well, I think is Pat Dorothy is winning ahead now because he's doing it his own fight. John is giving him his all work to his own way. That's all he's doing. He's giving him the fight to him. You know, he's stronger than him and he's still going to fight him. He should be boxing him away. And that's very much the way we've yeah. seen it. Just a, a, a final comment from you. How do you feel about going in with either of these two lads? Uh, well, I think they're both strong lad, and uh, Dorothy, Pat Dorothy, is more stronger, and is uh, well ahead in my eyes. You know. But you'd fancy your chances against him, would you? Thank you. Well, I wait uh, to see who is doing, and I <laughs> congratulate him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Thanks a lot, Najib. Second <laughs> Round of six. So six round and. Uh, Najib Daho, who sadly had to pull out here with an injury to his shoulder, reading things very much the same way as you and me, Jim, really. The superior strength of, of Pat Doherty. Yeah, well, Pat knows what he's got and he's used it all the way through the fight. He, he's kept up close, he's kept John under pressure all the time. Even when he's not throwing punches, he's threatening to throw punches, keeping him off balance and uh, forcing him to work all the time which is uh, the perfect way for, for him to go about this job. <laughs> Just in case you're missing Reg Guthridge's voice here, you can hear him from Atlanta, Georgia, ITV, Saturday afternoon. Tubbs and Witherspoon, the big heavyweights, and one or two others in action there. In the meantime, we've got some really compelling British title action in front of us now and John Doherty talking about that cut over his eye he was been stopped once before on cuts in fact that was his last defeat to Stuart Carmichael of Hull and that was back in November 83 Well, John's getting his punches off nice and quickly now. He's beating Pat to the punch yeah, for most of this round. Pat's still coming forward, but a bit slow to get his punches off. And that looks like a nick over Pat's right eye now. Well, as we suggested, Pat Doherty started off in top gear. But John Doherty might just be coming through and might be feeling well. I'm in the best condition of my life. I've got no fears about going the distance because that's surely his only chance of victory. I say that with a bit of caution, perhaps, but he has no record at all of stopping people and might just be building up for a decision over the 12 if he can stay in and survive those big punches from Pat, Jim. Right. Yeah, well, John's had plenty to say in this round. He's been doing very well. Uh, Pat landed a couple of good punches just uh, a few seconds ago. But over the piece, John has been first off, off, off his mark with the punches, quite accurate with the punches too. And uh, he's, he's had as much success in this round as any previous round, but uh, still under fire here as we speak. Gum shield out, John Doherty in the blue. The boy from Bradford. Good finish for the round two. <laughs> Applause ringing round this Guild Hall. This is John Doherty. 
getting a bit of attention to that left eye. John Doherty, would you believe it, just to confuse things even more, his real name is Pat. And when he entered the paid ranks, he had to change it because Pat Doherty had got there three months before. He's very much John tonight. And although he's had to box very much on the retreat, he's still very much involved in this British title fight. Just look at uh, Pat Doherty. It looks as though he started the fight in the other corner. Very fresh indeed. Seventh round of the 12. Well, it would seem I was wrong about the uh, Pat being cut in the, the last round. There must have been some blood from one of John's injuries because they didn't work on his eye at all in, in between rounds then. And they've wiped the blood away. There's not a sign of an injury. So I think it may just have been uh, uh, some blood maybe from one of John's injuries. It's difficult to see. Stone four men for the super featherweight title. The boxing historians among you might remember a fellow called Jimmy Anderson who won a title at this weight back in the late 60s. In fact, he won a Lonsdale belt outright. Then it was called the junior lightweight, and then the division was abolished. And this is the first British title fight for the super featherweight nine stone four division. And whoever wins it, Jim will know he has been in a hell of a scrap. Yeah, you can see that again. But Ted John's coming right back into it now. He's looking in good shape. He's getting his punches off a lot quicker than he was in the earlier parts of the fight. He's still having to take a few jolting jabs and right hands from Pat. But his own work's very good. He's getting a distance between him and his opponent, which he couldn't do earlier on in the fight. And uh, when he's in range, he's a nice little left hook from him there. That's a lovely punch. Yeah, John, I think John's confidence maybe start growing now he's having a bit of success. This is good work here. So, perhaps the balance of power is shifting here as John Doherty produces his best combination of the night. In the seventh round, again, that gum shield goes out almost. Jim, as though he's saying it's affecting me, I don't want it in there, I'll do without it, because there well, was no reason for the gum to go out then, surely. Well, I think he's, he's breathing through his mouth because of the nose injury. All his breathing has been done through the mouth, and I think he just lost control of the gum shield. They tried to catch it in his teeth, but uh, it's obviously just trouble he's having with his nose. He's taken a couple of punches now. It's, uh, never a good, it's never good news when you lose your gum shield oh, because your mouth's right. open all the time. Toe to toe stuff now, round seven. A lot of stamping feet behind us. And there might just be a little swelling around Pat's right eye. After that excellent work, and there are two more good crisp punches. And this has been John Doherty's best round beyond any question. Terrific action. So, John Doherty, despite the cuts and despite the steady nosebleed, is battling his way back into this British title fight. In the battle of the Doherty's, and perhaps for the first time tonight, a little turn in Pat's corner as a result, Jim Watt, of this terrific work from John. Yeah, well, I think uh, John's confidence must have grown a lot from, from that round. He had certainly more success there than any point in the fight. He, he let some good punches go. He, he was making Pat miss more so than any other round. He's got, his, his own work was very good, certainly an improvement in his work. And I think it must have done his confidence a lot of good. Second out, round eight. Round eight, then, of the 12 and things are getting very, very interesting out there. 
because Pat Doherty from Croydon in the white started off dominating this contest and John Doherty in the blue from Br Bradford has gradually sneaked his way back into it and he's now showing a lot of confidence and almost pulling the fight round to the sort of contest he was looking for, Jim. Yeah, well, if I was in Pat Doherty's corner, I'd be sending Pat out for a good round, for a big round. I'd tell him really to, to put the pedal to the floor and have a big round, because the worst thing that can happen for him is for John to gain in confidence. He's just had a good round. Uh, if he has another good round, then he's going to be right back into the fight again. Uh, so Pat should really, it should be all systems go for Pat, push him back and they throw plenty of punches, but he certainly hasn't been doing that so far in the round. Certainly Pat Doherty doesn't like clever boxers, he can be outclassed by them, can get a bit bemused by them. And John might just be trying to confuse him a bit here. See, Pat's work rate has dropped, whereas John's work rate has lifted, and that's the big difference at this stage, and John's going to end up pulling back some of these rounds he lost early on. He's pulling it back to make it a very close fight indeed. And Preston's waited a very long time for its first British title fight. But this one living up to all our expectations. Good contrast in styles, two very fit fighters. And providing a tremendous contrast and a tremendous night's entertainment. See, John's even putting more authority into his punches. Now, these are good jabs John Gordon is throwing. Good stiff jabs, you can see them as they land on target, you can see that the power from the shoulder, which he wasn't doing, he was pecking in the early rounds, and he didn't have the power to hold Pat off, but now he's putting plenty of meat into the punches and giving Pat a lot more trouble. Three, four punches from John Doherty. Pat right above us, looking at his face, it's reddening up a little bit. Not surprising, really. John Doe at his corner, urging him to keep working. This fight really is building up to quite a crescendo as we come towards the end of the eighth round. And still, really, as these two battle it out for the British Super Featherweight title, it's anyone's title. We join us in a couple of minutes. we go then into the ninth I certainly wouldn't complain if these lads took a little bit of a breather because the action has been pretty hectic from the word go and it's Pat Doherty who gets in early on with a good right hand and another one there that will give more trouble to John's left eye and surely the message must have gone into Pat from the corner. Unless you step things up, this title will not be coming back to Croydon with you. So you can see the authority in John's work now. His jab is a lot stronger than it was. And he's pushing Pat back a lot more than, than he's ever managed to do. Pat's coming forward again now. But uh, John's meeting them with good stiff punches now, whereas before they were little pecking punches. And that's the big difference at this stage. Still though, John in the blue from Bradford. He's still a hunted rather than the hunter. But it's a fascinating battle for the nine stone four title of Britain. We've also seen a nice bit of refereeing tonight, actually, because uh, John Doherty has been injured all the way through, but at no time has uh, Mr. Coyle, the referee, put the wind up and worried him, been inspecting the injury and all that. He's left him alone to get about his job, so 
it's nice when we see a bit of good refereeing to comment on it. But everything's right tonight, the fight's a cracker. Both men getting ready for a grandstand finish, but that's another very good right hand coming in from Pat John. Counter punching well though on the ropes, good skills. If you're looking, perhaps just tuning in and looking at the a red face of John Doherty, well, it's been that cue for some time now. And as Jim has said, he's boxed with that handicap and has boxed very well, in fact, produced his best rounds. Great flurry at the end of that round. What a good contest, and as Jim has been saying, so well refereed by John Coyle, who's just gone over to the corner and said, that's OK, carry on for a little bit longer. John Coyle, I've watched his progress since my days in the Midlands, one of our best referees first British official on the WBA list and his first appointment in fact coming up in Indianapolis next month when he referees the vacant light heavyweight title fight between Marvin Johnson and Leslie Stewart that for the title vacated by Michael Spinks and uh, no referee has deserved it more so there's Pat with well, I think that means he's winning it easily. But I wouldn't be all that sure. But we, we can't forget Doherty's the last three rounds for John Doherty have been very good, but we can't forget the first six when uh, Pat was pretty firmly in control. John left himself with a lot to do, and he's definitely, he's reacted to it well. He's come back in the last three rounds with some lovely boxing. Absolutely right. But again, the words of caution from John Doe at his corner about Pat's right hand, saying he's going for that weakness, for that eye. But that right hand was being thrown a long time before the eye was cut. See, Pat is giving his man much more room to work than he was in the early stages. He was sticking to him like a leech, keeping him under constant pressure. But now there's that yard between them all the time, which has given John a chance to bring his, his cleaner, uh, flashier boxing into play. Pat, if, if, if he wants to make sure this time, will have to go up a little bit closer and uh, knock John back out of his stride again. But he, he doesn't seem able to do that at the moment. There's just over a minute gone. Round 10 of 12. And it's been a very, very close thing. And if it continues like this way, over the next couple of rounds, well, John Coyle might have some trouble separating these two. Because after his early advantage, Pat in the white and Croydon has been pegged back considerably by the counter-punching skills of John in the blue from Bradford in this exhilarating battle of the Doherty's at Preston's Guildhall. And Jim, I know you're a man who always appreciates skills perhaps more than brawn, and I detect a sneaking admiration from you for the way that John Doherty has fought tonight. Yeah, well, you have to admire anybody who has the start that John's had. Well, first of all, coming in at short notice, then he kicks off with a nosebleed, then a cut eye. He's, he's taken stick uh, in the first half of a title fight, uh, and then suddenly he just gets his act together, and uh, from the halfway stage, he starts winning rounds. That's championship material for me. Uh, anybody can look good when things are going well, but when you have to come from behind, grit your teeth, uh, and get on with it, and that's certainly what John's done tonight. Both boys are certainly due victory tonight. I'm, I'm looking forward myself. It's very difficult at this stage uh, to separate them. I wouldn't but, ask you to. But I would say Pat was still in the lead at the moment uh, from the work he did early on. But uh, things are happening for John now. The last 15 seconds is rather unpleasant. Things might be happening for John at the end of this round. 
Once again, that telling right hand coming in from Pat. And John coming back with a lovely little flurry right at the end. Late night boxing action coming your way then, and the sort of action that it's been, well, not the type of stuff you would leave, I'm sure. Come on, I won't give you a gargle this time. Come on, touch it on the eye now. There we are, Come just... Let's double and treble the jab up now. Move, move, move. Two rounds. Come on, you've got to have a good round here. Nice and busy, be first all the time. Come on. Just Eve's dropping there in John's corner. Just a couple of rounds left. They're telling him, keep moving. Manager John Celebanski there. And let's hear what they're saying to Pat. Well, I can tell you that Ernie Foster... Seconds out. Round 11. are urging Pat to give just a little bit more effort as we come out for the 11th. I must realise that this is going to be decided by a very narrow margin indeed. Pat's actually standing off, and that's the last thing you should be doing. He's already given John too much room to work. Now he's standing off and giving him more. But as I see, just about the last thing he wants to be doing. I don't really think Pat's had a big round since the halfway stage. It's, uh, it's looking like a, a fight of two halves, if you like. Pat did everything in the first half, and John's come back in the second half. It just depends if uh, referee Coyle has uh, scored in the rounds even. That's what the fight's going to hinge on, how many even rounds and whether they were in the first half of the fight or the second half of the fight. But, but John's worked for me since the halfway stage has certainly been better than Pat's. Pat looking to get that right hand going again. John Doherty, a natural featherweight, he says, and he, he might well go for the title in that division, but win or lose here tonight. But he would very much like to have a couple of titles under his belt with the boy from Bradford. And he has staged a remarkable boxing comeback here after things looked distinctly unhealthy for him early on. We're into the 11th. One more after this. And surely we're going to get a grandstand finish here with the previous action ending to go by. Stunning right hand from Pat. But John's got a good boxing brain, boxing well behind that left hand, keeping at distance again, trying to keep himself out of trouble and then getting in with those combinations while Pat whose expression has hardly changed since he came into the ring pursues him relentlessly but Pat's not getting his punches off the way he was earlier on his defence is still nice and tight he's still moving forward but he's not getting the punches off Whereas uh, John's stealing the action with a nice little quick jabs, uh, twos and threes. Another good one for John. Then Pat, at 23, has come back terrifically well despite the disadvantages of that cut over his eye and a bleeding nose too, and he must feel that he's in with a chance. What a finish we've got in store here. It's the last round, and the crowd are on their feet here at Preston's Guild Hall. It could even all rest on this one. No matter what, Jim, it's surely going to be a very, very close thing indeed. Yeah, it's going to be close. 
It's been a cracking fight all the way through, as I say, a tale of two halves. Eh? Pat certainly caught one in the first half of the fight. John coming back with better work in the second half. Uh, it just depends, as I said, if the referee has scored many even rounds. But uh, John Coyle is certainly find a winner. There's no way he'll score this a draw. I can't see him scoring it a draw. I'm just wondering who that winner's going to be. I, I feel that if Pat could have a big, a big round here, it would maybe just come in his direction because he's the man who was in front earlier on. So there's a possibility he is one round in front at the moment, and if he loses this round, you have a draw situation, which then a ref which can sway a referee into picking a winner. So Pat really wants a big round here, just to, just to put a clincher on it. But yeah, it's a long time since he's had a big round, having said that. And John's supporters will point to his crisp work throughout the middle of the fight, and that work is continuing with that little flurry here in the last round. No matter what, and despite the problems for insignificant people like commentators there are few people that wouldn't want to see this sort of thing again because this has been an exceptional British title fight first one of 86 and what a standard the Doherty's have set John's not busy enough at this stage, he, he's just doing too much skipping around uh, the ropes, he should be throwing more punches, he's the man who needs the rounds, he can't have them in his pocket, but John is just not throwing enough punches in this round. Got him with a right there. Trying to look light on his feet, John lasts 45 seconds. I'm sure a lot of you at home will have made your own minds up which way this is going to go as John stages a point scoring flurry into the last 30 seconds great atmosphere here too as Preston enjoys this rare British title fight countdown now last 10 will it go to Pat Doherty from Croydon or John Doherty in the blue from Bradford we're going to find out very shortly John Coyle and John Coyle gives it to John Doherty and there's elation and disappointment from Pat and John Coyle applauds the arena is in uproar here good spirit between the boxers too the boxing skills of John Doherty triumph over the strength of Pat Doherty. But what a fight, Jim. Oh, a cracker from start to finish. And no, no way can you grudge a winner of this fight, uh, wh whoever's hand was lifted. Uh, John had a bad start. I think Pat must be kicking himself today. So firmly in command after six rounds and then lose it in points over 12 rounds. I I'm sure he's kicking himself. His seconds must be sick. He must be sick. Oh, what a great performance from young John. He came in at short notice and he's going home with a title. Fantastic. He's going to go home with a title and with a Lonsdale belt as well. Round the middle it goes of John Doherty. A gentleman, please. And let's hear Matt Vassal's verdict, perhaps. I'm sure it's going to be a very Ladies close Ladies and gentlemen, indeed. the referee scores the contest. John Doherty, 118 pounds. Points. Pat Doherty, 117 points. John Doherty is the winner. Just a couple of rounds in it then. And John Doherty is the British super featherweight champion. And I think we can hear now the new champion as he talks to the new Gary Newman. John. John.
John Doherty, a week ago you were second behind Pat Cowdell waiting for a crack at this title. So how surprised are you to be the new British super featherweight champion? No, I kept fit over Christmas in anticipation of it happening. John told me to keep fit, you never know what might happen. So I did, I knew I was fit enough. I knew up fight to fight with him and uh, I did the business tonight. Yes, but a week ago you couldn't have thought you were going to be British champion, you weren't oh, even fighting. I didn't even think I was fighting then, no. <laughs> You looked in trouble in the early rounds. Yeah, it was a bit of a slow start, but I got on my toes and started picking him off a bit then later on. But a great fighter, him is a really strong lad. Did you think his fitness waned in the middle of that fight when you were able to come back? I thought he might have tired a little bit, yeah. Uh, it seemed to slow down, so I got on my toes. Unless it were me getting on my toes and was just finding me difficult to wait, I'm not really sure. But uh, I put up a really good show. I was strong all the way through, as you've seen in the last round. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a tremendous uh, contest and a tremendous win for you, but looking at your cut eye, your yeah, last I defeat was uh, two years that. ago with cuts. How long are you going to stay champion with cut eyes? Well, it's on its second time I've had it. It was a clash of heads, like, it didn't mean to do it. It was just one of them things. Well, of course, there's Nashib Daho waiting for a crack and Pat Caldell as well. Now, Caldell's just fought for a world title. How long do you honestly think you can stay champion? Oh, I'll stay champion, I'm not worried about them. <laughs> yes, but what about Caldell? Well, he's a good fighter, yeah. We'll see. Uh, I think I'll do OK against him. And Daho? Yeah, I'm OK, yeah. I think I'll handle him OK. Who do you want to meet first? sort of style to win. Who, I who think, well, I am going to meet Dayo first. Dayo think, first yeah. and then Caldell. Yeah. Fantastic fight, fantastic performance. What yeah, a surprise, you, well done. What a championship and what a way...